Matthew and his wife Liv have a have a really uh, tight um, rock centric song groove thing that they do. A lot of it's based on the sounds, the sonics that Matthew gets. So Matthew uses a, a kind of a semi hollow body Dan Electro guitar, which has a lot of resonance to it. Right now he's we're, we want him to get his sound with the pedals that he's got, so he's comfortable with what he gets. The situation we have is the guitar player is in here with the drummer, and what I don't want his amp to be in here with the drummer because we don't want all the guitar amp sound in the room. So what I'm going to do is plug the guitar into a direct box, which is a transformer. And the mic, these would normally go into a board, into a preamp, but I'm just changing the impedance so I can run them over a long distance with no loss. So the guitar is going in here, and out of this is a balanced cable that goes into the, the mic patch bay. The guitar sound goes through the studio, through all our wiring, and it's going to come out over here. And out of that patch bay, I take another mic cable, and I go into another VI, and now I transform it back from that low impedance mic level back to the guitar level high impedance. Well, that signal is gone probably 150 feet or something, but it's still going to sound good. And that way the amp is out here, it can be loud as he wants, and get a great sound on the amp, but it won't be all over the drums in the, during the recording. Matthew's got his, his basic sound that he likes to get. He's running through his own pedals. He's running through a guitar amp we have here in the studio called a Reverend Hellhound. It's a tube-based amplifier. We're doing no processing whatsoever on, on the front end. We're making sure that we capture his sound as closely as he likes to get his sound. And then we'll figure out some things on the back end if we need to for the song. We have the guitar behind these this gobo just to keep the sound down a little bit. But let me show you how we're micing it. Get a little light on this. It's a little too dark down here to show you guys what's going on, but let me describe it up here. If this is the speaker cabinet, and the speaker's right here, okay? Say that my hand is the speaker. Um, I have a ribbon mic, a Royer. Again, a little bit of a darker sound. I'm using this, there's usually two sides of a ribbon. One is slightly brighter than the other, as Mike said, it's a figure eight pattern. I'm using the slightly brighter side uh, to aim at the cone of the speaker. And if this is a, if my knuckle here is the center of the cone, that's the brightest part of the speaker. If I wanted to get a really bright sound, I'd put the mic in right there, head on. But a lot of the sound, the, the deeper stuff, is coming off the paper cone around the outside. So what I'm actually doing is coming, I'm miking the cone over here, and I'm also coming at a little bit of an angle. So I'm getting more of the overall speaker and less a spe specific spot of the speaker. So, how about that far? off the speaker. So I'm getting a lot of a lot of uh, air, you know, relatively speaking, without getting a room sound. Um, also, the back of the mic is up against this gobo here, which is a sound deadener, so that reflection or the other aspect of the room that the mic might be picking up from the back side of the figure eight is not going to be as evident. So it's going to be a slightly more direct, closer kind of mic sound for the guitar. Ribbon mics traditionally uh, use a very heavy magnet element and a very lightweight and very fragile ribbon element. And the ribbon element uh, is typically made out of some kind of aluminum and or foil material. Uh, it doesn't take sound pressure, in other words, really big sound pressure levels like guitar cabinets and those type of things very well in a traditional ribbon mic. Some of the newer ribbon mics are using a little bit different structures that they're a little bit less um, fragile. The Royer 121 is a good example of that. It's a ribbon mic, it has great technology, but it's, uh, it's not as fragile as some of the earlier models. 